The Georgia Bulldogs, last year, 14-1, and their only loss in the SEC championship game. Uh, against the spread, were 10 and 5 last year. Their post-game win expectancy for the regular season, uh, including the SEC championship game, of course, was 11.98 and 1.02. That one loss, of course, to Alabama in the SEC championship game. So the numbers do make sense. They dominated everybody all the way to the title game. So uh, looking at their projected SP Plus record, it sits about 10 and 2. And it maybe kind of makes sense considering all of the pieces that they lost. They lost Nakobe Dean, Jamari Sailor, uh, uh, Jordan Davis, uh, White and Cook, the two running backs, wide receiver Jermaine Burton, of course, transferred over to Alabama. But look at these numbers. PPA margin, number one. Offensive PPA per drive was number 12. Like, incredibly efficient offense for as much as everybody wanted to make fun of it. Uh, under Stetson Bennett, they they got things rolling, and they were incredibly efficient, incredibly good, uh, rather explosive. Uh, you know, it says number 80 in explosive play rate, but they were beating teams so badly that they didn't have to worry with that too much. I mean, it was just absurd looking at this team. Uh, starting off on the offense, Todd Munkin is back as the offensive coordinator. Of course, NFL experience there. I don't know that he's doing exactly what he wants to do, but he is building an offense that fits the personnel that they have uh, best. So a lot of tight ends, uh, running backs that are speedy, shifty, can catch out of the backfield, etc. Very explosive guys. And I do think that they've got some playmakers at wide receiver this year. And, of course, that's in Bennett. So you got to keep the offense to where he can actually run it, right? It's Nobody accuses Stetson Bennett of being an NFL-level quarterback, but he is good at what he does, so long as you keep it easy on him. So don't ask him to do too much, and he can be incredibly successful, especially with all the talent that you have around him. Uh, he is back, of course, with a loaded running back and tight end core wide receiver. You got uh, Adonai Mitchell. You got uh, Rosemary Sa- uh, Jack Saint, excuse me, Blaylock, etc. Like I think those guys are going to step up a little more this year. Offensive line has the highest rated recruits in the country. You got three of them back with 780 plus snaps. Along with that, you've got another one with 434 snaps. Two others with over 100. You have Bowers, Gilbert, Lad McConkey. I mean, you got names everywhere on this roster. And the offense is pretty loaded. I think they, I think the defense may have to lean on the offense a little bit in the early going until the new guys step up and figure out exactly what their roles are, right? That'll move us over to the defense. Uh, new defensive coordinators, of course, because Dan Lanning took the Oregon job. Will Muschamp and Glenn Schumann, and both of them were already on staff. They are co-DCs here. Uh, only six players back with 300-plus snaps, but you got plenty of young guys with a ton of talent. I mean, just ridiculous. You do have... Some guys that had some snaps played in 2021, it's very helpful when you get those blowouts, when you can get the young guys in, allow them to make mistakes, allow them to learn on the job, right? Uh, Eight defensive players were drafted off of last year's team. Defensive tackle Jalen Carter is probably going to anchor that line. Nolan Smith going to be a leader at linebacker. And Ringo and Smith will anchor the defensive backs. Tons of talent, but it is all fresh. So it could take a little bit for it to gel. Uh, projected favorites in 12 games. I mean, the key players here, I've got Stetson Bennett. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens there. I mean, they, I, it wouldn't shock me if somebody else were to come in and maybe take that job because the guys that are behind him were higher-rated recruits than him. Maybe they have more talent, etc. But I think that that's his locker room. I think Bennett's the guy in the locker room, so I don't think it's going to be easy to take it away from him. Kenny McIntosh, I think, is going to be a stud this year. Brock Bowers, of course, was awesome. Jalen Carter. It's a, I could put a thousand names on this list uh, for key players. So, uh, as far as keys to the season here, uh, 15 guys gone into the NFL, five coaches gone, still a lot of talent. How does Georgia handle a hangover? I think that's the question everybody wants to know. Uh, what does the offense look like if the defense is not quite what it was last season? We talk about how efficient, or I did, talked about how efficient that offense was. It's easy to be efficient when you have that defense behind you, when that defense pins them, when the defense gives you the ball on a short field, et cetera, right? It's it's different when the defense may not be quite to the level that it was last season. Uh, are they going to be more aggressive on offense? Uh, how does Stetson perform? There's so many questions here. Uh, the schedule still sets up great. I mean, you start off with Oregon. Obviously, there's potential there for, uh, you know, possibly a loss. I don't foresee it. There's a reason why they're favored by 17 here. Uh, but after that, you got Samford at South Carolina. Could be maybe tricky. You got Kent State after that at Missouri, Auburn, Vandy. Uh, all in all, I mean, it's set up pretty well. 
uh, for them to make another run to Atlanta for the SEC championship game and then back to the playoff, even if you are not as good as last season. Now, that being said, projected favorites in all 12 games. There are no games that are projected to be within one score. Uh, the win total sits at 10.5. It's juiced to the over at minus 215. And to win the conference, they are plus 140. To win the division, it is minus 600. I've got them going 11-1. and one. I've got a loss to Tennessee on here. It could be Florida. It could be Mississippi State. That's kind of the stretch run there. If the defense is not quite gelling, one of those offenses could, could maybe get them. Uh, I don't, I mean, would it surprise me if they go 12-0? and 0? Absolutely not. Now, I've, I've got a loss to Tennessee on here because it's tough to go undefeated, especially two years in a row. Um, I mean, we saw it in the SEC championship game last year. Like, Georgia should have dominated Alabama, just that bottom line. Uh, but they couldn't get it done in that in that big moment. Uh, you know, they got it done in the biggest moment. So, at least they got that redo in the national title game. But, you know, Tennessee, uh, just fresh off the rivalry against Florida. You know, if Florida gives them a little bit of a game, maybe Tennessee's offense is clicking. Uh, you know, I, I, I see 11-1 here. You know, one loss that, that you wouldn't necessarily expect. I mean, maybe it could come in week three at South Carolina. If Spencer Rattler's got that offense humming, yeah, you never know. But I think 11-1 and one is good, and I expect them to be back in the SEC championship game again this coming season uh, and probably in the college football playoff. Just a guess. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.